Dr. Dave 101. All right, there is an old saying that there is no I in team, but there sure is hell and me in there if you spell the letters wrong. The reason why I bring this up is when we go through and investigate these topics, one of the biggest flaws we have in this entire phenomena is we are not sharing evidence. But there's a number of reasons for that. A lot of people do not share evidence because of what happens on the internet. The internet is a cruel, stingy, mean place if you want to provide evidence. It is a place where your video of Sasquatch or your photo of a ghost will get absolutely torn apart by a bunch of armchair critics who were not there to see the buildup to the story. That is what is wrong with this field. And it has individualized the investigator to the point where they don't want to share their information anymore. But we need it to happen. Why do we need it to happen? We need to be able to share our evidence, share our information to see if others can investigate those same places in order to try and recreate the evidence that was found. It is a tough gig to do, especially with a field that is so very untrustworthy of one another. Friends become friends, then they become enemies very, very quickly in this field, all because you may have a certain disbelief than the other. It is individualized potential groups, paranormal teams, Sasquatch teams, UFO hunting teams, Every field has been individualized. It is not healthy to individualize anything. It is healthy to get other opinions. However, with the way the internet has been over the last decade or so regarding these phenomena, would you really put your personal information out there? It's a very tough call. I can tell you right now, I don't think if I had the smoking gun video of Bigfoot, that I would put it out. Why? I don't need the criticism. I don't need the headache. I don't need the threats. I don't need the questions about my own sanity or whether or not I know how to use Photoshop or video editing, which I do not. I don't know how this works. But if I'm in the British Columbia forest and I get that video, I'm keeping it out of the public. There are people I would send it to because I wouldn't want to individualize my work. I would want it looked at. I would send it to David Weatherly. I would send it to Timothy Renner. I would send it to Butch Witkowski, Ronald Murphy, David Politis. The reason why I would is because I want affirmation from people who know more than I do. What I wouldn't do is release it to the public. Now, a lot of people would say that is the wrong attitude to have. If you have that smoking gun, you need to put it out there. You need to be able to get that information to the public. Let us all see it. Who, who is Butch Witkowski? Who is David Weatherly? Well, who are you? But we become so mean and fickle in this field, and it doesn't matter what you're investigating, that no one trusts anyone anymore. We don't trust opinion. We don't trust the way we investigate. We see it all the time. But in order to get the answers that we want, we need to be able to share the evidence, whether it's with scientists, whether it's with more experienced investigators. It doesn't mean you have to go public, but what it does mean is at least you are not hoarding your evidence or your findings. Look, we all want answers to what is going on in this field. We all want to be able to say Bigfoot is real. Ghosts are real and there is an afterlife. 
the extraterrestrials that are flying these these rods, these boomerangs, these spaceships, these flying saucers, these black triangles, they are real. We all want it. We all want confirmation. But guess what? The majority of the public does not care. It's only the people who have special interest in these topics that we love that care. And believe it or not, we are in the minority. So the point of hoarding evidence and hoarding your information, hoarding locations, does nothing to help the field grow. If we want to help it grow, and sure, this may sound utopian, we have to be able to work with others. And not just people who agree with our opinion. We have to be able to take constructive criticism. For instance, with this radio show, you, the public, may not see it, but I have a number of people who critique this show, professionals who own radio stations, and radio critics who listen to this show to tell me what we do right and what we do wrong, which is why every now and again, we switch up the format. That's the way we solve things to make things better and bigger and to grow what we do. When it comes to the paranormal, supernatural, the phenomena in general, we have this attitude that if we share that video, if we share those footprints, if we share the evidence that we get, that somebody's going to beat us to it. Somebody is going to ruin our day in the sunshine. Not true. Not true at all. For most cases. I can understand the fear. I can totally understand the want desire. And hey, there are people out there that want to play alone. And that is okay too. But if you're actually trying to solve the mysteries of what we are doing and what we love, you need to be able to trust people. You need to be able to share locations. You need to be able to tell people, this is where I had my encounter with the aliens. This is where the UFO landed. This is where Sasquatch came within 25 feet of me. This is where the gnomes popped out of the tree. This is where it happened. Trust is something that is very, very few and far between in this field. Hey, I'll be the first one to admit, there are a lot of people I do not trust in this field. You do need to be picky. You do need to understand that there are a lot of people who would love to throw you under the bus because they don't agree with you. But they are the minority of us in the majority. How do we make it better? Find people who are professional in this field. Believe it or not, there are a number of high-quality individuals who do this full-time. Timothy Renner, David Weatherly, Ross Allison, to name three. Why not go to people like that? It's not about the television stars, okay, just because they've had a hit series that they are fully trustworthy. Okay? And most of the time, their egos are so large, they don't want to deal with us minority investigators. Those of us who are below them, beneath them, because they are better than us. Unless we have something that they want. Then all of a sudden, they'll give us not 15 minutes of fame, maybe seven. They'll be our best friend for about seven minutes. And then you're off flying in the wind again. But individualizing your investigations, if you're not doing it for yourself and yourself only, really does hurt the field. The danger of it all is this. What if you get hurt? What if something happens that you can't control? And even if you're with a team, what happens if another team has that same type of information and they want to correlate theirs with yours. Are you really that much of an arrogant person or team to not allow that to happen? If you are, you're not solving anything. You're not trying to solve anything 
and nothing will be solved. Look, we as people in this field need to stay humble. We need to stay focused. And we also need to understand that when we are out in the field, we need to decide, are we out here for our own benefit or the benefit of the field? Because too many times we are out for the benefit of ourselves, but claiming to be out there for the benefit of the field. We need to keep our focus. We need to keep straight. We need to stay on par with what we are trying to solve. Look, you may be looking to solve something different than I am, but it doesn't mean that we're not going down the same path. We need to be able to do that. And to do that, you need help. You need other people, people that you can trust. Not people from your inner core, but people who are out there doing this professionally, who are trying to solve some of the greatest mysteries that this planet hides from us on a daily basis. We do not know the answers. We do not know what is truly out there. We want to know, but we have to team up to do it. The individual alone will never be able to do it. It's unfortunate, but it is true. And until people in this field start working together and sharing evidence, as utopian as it is, we will never find the answers that we need. And that is your Dave 101.